Yesterday evening, a certiorari was granted this uh, appeal for a stay from the Supreme Court on the immunity case uh, for moving forward, converted into an actual uh, oral argument and uh, with full briefing. What the court did was they converted it to a, a certiorari petition, and then the court itself granted the wrote the question that they wanted to have answered. The application for a stay presented to the Chief Justice is referred by him to the court. Normally, you get that order, Jordan, and our audience within 24 hours of when you file the application for a stay. That did not happen here. They they stopped. They did not. There was no evidence, at least on the record, that the court keeps where it says refer to the court for a stay. There was no indication that that happened. I said on the broadcast, I think Wednesday or Tuesday, that I expected that that did happen. So we now know that the application... Because the Chief Justice on his own could have dealt with the stay, but he referred it to the court. So that meant all nine justices got the stay application. The special counsel's request to treat the stay application as a petition for writ of certiorari is granted. Remember, Jack Smith in December tried to jump over the Court of Appeals. (laughs) Supreme Court said no. Then the Court of Appeals ruled, and then they took, Trump's people took it up as a stay, not a certiorari petition. Just they wanted it stopped and they were going to file the certiorari petition. Jack Smith said in his response, well, at least treat the, the stay as a cert petition, which is not an unusual practice. They did that. So the court then, it takes four justices to grant a stay, uh, to grant a certiorari petition. There were at least four votes at that point to hear it. But then the next sentence says the petition is granted limited to the following question. And I'll let you read it in a minute. That question was drafted by the Supreme Court, yep. not the parties. This is the only question that should be answered in the uh, briefing and then oral yes. argument. And let me tell you something else before you go to it. And the mistake that lawyers make is they don't answer the question presented. Right. So when I just told our team for the brief we're filing, all I want to do is answer the question presented. Yep. That's what we need to do here. So this is the question presented. There's kind of two or three questions within the question. Whether and if so, to what extent... Does a former president enjoy presidential immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office? You got to focus on that. And if so, what to what extent? That indicates to me that a number of members may not be a majority. I don't know that. But a number of members of the court thinks there is immunity. Right. Now, the question is whether there is immunity, but also what is the extent of that immunity? And does a former president... This was the thing I, th- I said the D.C. Court of Appeals got wrong. Enjoy that presidential immunity um, for official acts during his tenure. The answer to that has to be yes. Because if it's not yes, it means that any president could be brought up by any U.S. attorney, on crim- former president, on criminal charges. So we just had Mike Pompeo on. You're talking about a senior advisor to the president, right? I mean, he was the secretary of state. Or how about us? Counsel to the president. Yeah. And we're giving advice. And we say, no, this doesn't violate 18 USC, whatever the code section is. That's a criminal code. Well, under this rule, under the D.C. Circuit, at 1201, he became citizen Trump. Yeah. Fact is, he doesn't become citizen Trump. He's still a former president of the United States. Is President Bush going to be signed because sued or criminally because there were no weapons of mass destruction? Or how about, you know, President Obama? I could go through all of them. So... I think the court got that wrong, but the way they drafted the question, whether and if so, to what extent does the former president enjoy this immunity for official acts? So here's the real question. Did the district court develop a record on whether these were official acts or not? And I think, and the answer to that is no, they did not. So that's where I think this ends up going back down. That's why I don't think this case goes to trial, even if he lost this year. And I don't think he's going to lose. Go ahead. So, I mean, you think, uh, again, that they end up, sending it back to decide what I think you're going to say there is immunity right. now you got to determine are these official acts what you're what you're saying we're and criminal. on the election issues which is what the january 6th stuff is i would say that goes under the execution clause of the united states the president as commander-in-chief has to faithfully execute the laws of the united states he thought they were not faithfully executed without expressing a view on the merits this court directs the court of appeals to continue withholding issuance of the mandate until the sending down of the judgment of this court the application for a stay is dismissed as moot. They decided we don't need an application for a stay because we're hearing the case. That meant there were five votes 
to say no mandates issued. What does that mean? They're, when they say without expressing a view on the merits, they're not making a merits decision whether it was a criminal act or not a criminal act. They're making a legal determination. That's what the court's going to do as to does the immunity apply and what is the extent of that immunity? And does it apply And this only if in the case of official acts? The district court's going to have to make the determination whether these were official acts or not. The interesting thing is the mandate, um, the court froze the court of appeals and the district court. Nothing can proceed in these lower courts while this is pending. So the case has stopped. No discovery, no motion practice, no witness exchanges, no no evidence exchanges. The case is frozen. The question that got presented leads to a potential for a Supreme Court decision, even that doesn't side with either the special counsel or president trump yet that could restart this from the very very beginning over just defining which i don't even know if courts will want to do official acts versus unofficial acts of an incumbent president which which very while he's president not easy well i mean you got it raises a separation of powers issue right. who decides what's an official act a court four years after the fact yeah so here's what it, but remember what they wrote and this is what the supreme court wrote Whether, and if so, to what extent does a former president enjoy presidential immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office? If it's an official act, how could you be criminally prosecuted? The Constitution requires that the president faithfully execute the laws of the United States. President Trump was convinced that there was election irregularities. Put aside whether there was or wasn't. He was convinced of it. I'm, I'm sure he would pass a lie detector test, no doubt. Um, the idea now is, for Jack Smith, they're looking at this saying, we got two problems, not just one. We have two. One, we have another case involving a January 6th defendant who raised that the obstruction of Congress statute violated the First Amendment. Two justices, two judges of the D.C. Circuit disagreed with him, but Judge Katzis agreed with him. That case is now at the Supreme Court, too. That's two of the four charges against President Trump. Then add this to it, and you got a real... Jack Smith suffered a huge loss. The way this works, there's no way this case can go to... Their sliver of hope is zero. Right. I mean, okay. and that's because... First of all, if they did it, and they said we're going to go to trial in October while the man's running for president of the United States, Republican nominee, you'd have a, a revolt in this country. You can't do that. I don't do think that. Joe it's Biden not, would want it either. I think no, I don't it, think I he would either. that helps President... It actually would you know, help Joe Biden needs President to be thinking... You know what Joe Biden needs to do? Call Merrick Garland and say, hey, your position is going to impact me right. and my administration. Especially when I got Why my are you son doing having this? to testify, my whole family having to testify, yes. got a special counsel on me, and now if he beats me, what are they going to do to me? Exactly. My family. This is a terrible pres- precedent for any president of the United States. Yeah, th- and at the ACLJ, we have been very protective of the executive branch of government and the separation of powers. And I'm telling our audience right now, we've got a team, a team that has represented this president before, putting together an amicus brief filed by the American Center for Law and Justice, letting the court know our view on this, and we've got the experience to back it up. 